What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week five fantasy football running back starts and sits for every single matchup. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Real quick, before getting into our breakdown, a quick word from our partners at Price Picks, which is our favorite DFS site of choice this NFL and fantasy football season. If you guys aren't familiar with them, do yourself a favor and check them out. In fact, when you sign up right now and use code ADP, you get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And look, we're already doing all this research for our fantasy football matchup. So why not take advantage of it and get some profits as well? Price picks, well, they allow you to basically do exactly that. They have so many different player prop bets, not only in terms of single stat DFS, but also in terms of fantasy score. And you combine can combine them any which way you want. Super simple, super easy to use. All you have to do, choose two more players from the board, and then just pick the over under on their projected fantasy score or on their single stat. Again, pretty much for every single matchup as the week progresses, those uh, options will be updated even more so. And then the great thing is you've got two different options in terms of how you want to bet it, whether it's a flex play. So that way you can miss one of your selections, but still win. Obviously that's the safer choice. Or if you want more bang for your buck, check out the power play where if you get all your picks correct, well, you win even bigger. So again, check all of that out details in the description. And we kick off week five with the Rams at the Seahawks NFC West divisional clash. I think this should be a high scoring affair. That's why I'm very high on Daryl Henderson and who, by the way, looked really good in week four coming back from his injury. Uh, I'm not going to get cute here. I'm not going to start Sony Michelle. You know, he had an opportunity in week four. He had a fumble. Uh, Henderson is the main guy. He's going to get the majority of the opportunities. And I think he's going to be a high-end running back two here, maybe even a low-end RB1 versus the Seahawks defense. Uh, I much rather prefer him above Chris Carson, even though it's not like I'm low on Chris Carson. Uh, but, you know, this Rams defense, it's a tough matchup. Carson is coming off a down week where he was actually outproduced by Alex Collins, who I do have as a sit, uh, primarily because I still view Chris Carson as the long-term solution for the Seahawks at running back. And I believe that they do as well. You know, just every once in a while, somebody else in that backfield is doing a little bit better. And at the end of the day, I don't think there's going to be multiple fantasy viable running backs here. Carson is the guy. I view him as a low end RB2 versus this tough matchup. Uh, and then I am sitting Alex Collins, even though he had a nice week, you know, uh, in week four, but more so I think that was a flash in the pan. Then we've got the Jets at the Falcons. I'll begrudgingly put Michael Carter as a start because he's kind of trending in the direction of owning this backfield. But at the end of the day, if you try and convince me that he should be a sit, then I would have zero problem with that because I've got Johnson and Coleman as sits. Because at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to see too many situations where the Jets have viable opportunities to you know, give a lot of production to their running backs because they're going to be playing from behind a lot. And even though they just won versus the Tennessee Titans, well, Michael Carter wasn't all that great. You know, he had like 39 yards and a touchdown, which is what saved him. So I don't love the situation for him there. I think he's going to be a guy that, you know, is somebody that's more productive later on in the season, you know, maybe 2022, a real long term outlook, uh, just because right now I, I don't think the Jets are a team that, you know, have it completely uh, figured out in terms of the offense they want to run, the offensive line, et cetera, et cetera. But you get the point. Uh, the only reason I have him as a start here is because it's a favorable matchup versus the Falcons. For Atlanta, Mike Davis and the poster child of week four, Cordero Patterson. Uh, Davis, you know, I'm going to start him because it's a favorable matchup versus the Jets. Uh, and he's still getting the bulk of the carries, which is what you want in your primary uh, fantasy running back. But the problem is we can't view Davis as a mid-level RB2, probably low end, and maybe even more honestly, a high end RB3, because again, the Falcons just, 
they're not built to be a running team. That's not their forte, uh, which is what makes Cordero Patterson so much more valuable is because he's actually being utilized as a wide receiver. He's got the running back wide receiver designation and why I view him as a mid-level a running back two, maybe even high end running back two. Is he going to duplicate the three touchdown performance from week four? I doubt it. Um, but I think he's still going to be pretty valuable. Moving on, we've got the Patriots at the Texans. Here, I'm only interested in the Patriots backfield. Damian Harris, you know, tough couple of weeks, uh, but he was facing the Bucks defense this last week. And at the end of the day, this matchup is going to be great versus the Houston Texans defense. And I think this is going to be a game script much more in favor for the rushing attack of the Patriots. Uh, Harris is still the main guy for New England in that backfield in terms of bulk carries. Then Brendan Bolden may be a surprise candidate as a start here. He could take over that James White role in New England, and that does bring value. So uh, he's going to be somebody that's probably added throughout waivers and could be in, you know, PPR formats, a high-end RB3, low-end RB2. So somebody to keep an eye out for. Uh, for the Texans, pass on everybody. This this doesn't even take any consideration because as long as you don't have Tyrod Taylor, none of these guys are viable. And Davis Mills just, he makes this offense, you know, take a huge step back, which to begin with, it wasn't all that great. And versus a pretty stingy Patriots defense, uh, I have zero interest in any of these guys for the Texans. Then the Lions at the Vikings. I'm starting all running backs here. DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, Swift, the preferred option. Um, you know, it was a little bit disappointing to see his carries this last week versus the Bears, but um, I think maybe that was more so because of load management, something like that. Uh, he's still the primary guy for the Detroit Lions, not even close, much higher upside. Uh, but Jamal Williams, he's not going away. And, and that's what I've been saying, you know, for a long time before this fantasy season kicked off. Williams in PPR formats, you could do a lot worse. He's a low-end RB2, high-end RB3 at worst, so I don't mind that. For the Vikings, Dalvin Cook. Yes, he's coming off a very bad performance versus the Cleveland Browns. But versus this Lions defense, we saw what David Montgomery did versus them in week four. They were a very bad defense. Expect a big bounce back from Dalvin Cook. He is a you know top five running back on the week. And as long as he's healthy, Alexander Madison, not really in the conversation, which is why you don't even see him on this list. Moving on, Eagles at the Panthers. Christian McCaffrey, you see him as a start here if he is available. Panthers don't know yet whether he is you know, going to be fully healed from that hamstring, but he wasn't placed on IR. He's going to test it out um, in the middle of the week and during practice. So there is, I would say, some chance that he plays. If he plays, obviously a must start. Then Chuba Hubbard and Royce Freeman, forget about them. But if McCaffrey doesn't play, I'll go with Hubbard. Uh, we saw he was much more utilized last week than Royce Freeman. Uh, unfortunately, it was just a game script where the game got away from the Panthers, so they had to rely on passing the football. And, you know, they looked at DJ Moore. They looked at Robbie Anderson. They weren't looking at the running backs at that point in time because none of them have the same type of upside as a McCaffrey. I don't think the Eagles are going to be able to pull away from the Panthers like the Dallas Cowboys did. So for that reason, uh, I think Hubbard, if McCaffrey isn't available, uh, will have a better performance. But still, I would say, you know, mid-level RB2. Uh, and I don't even have to say it, but McCaffrey is an RB1 if he plays. For the Eagles, I'm sitting all these guys. Honestly, I am. It hurts to say, but Miles Sanders, his usage these last two weeks has been awful. It, it really has been. And Jalen Hurts is the primary rusher on this team. That's how they're utilizing him. The Panthers, even though they just got absolutely dominated by the Dallas Cowboys and uh, in their rushing department and their run defense got obliterated after having an awesome first three weeks, uh, I don't think the running attack for the Eagles is on the same level. That offensive line is truly banged up, and I don't like this matchup. Kenneth Gainwell, yes, he had a huge performance, but... I think that, you know, he's a little bit too touchdown dependent and uh, I'm just fading him here for that reason. But to be fair, if there's one of these running backs that I would start at this point in time, it would probably be Gainwell because of how he's being, being utilized as a pass catcher for what that's worth. Then we've got the Saints at Washington. I'll start Alvin Kamara. Yes, very disappointed in terms of how he wasn't used as a pass catcher. Didn't have a single target, which is insane. That makes zero sense. Uh, now, worth mentioning here, Troy Jones, 
injured. That's why I've got Ty Montgomery as a sit. He is the next man up, but I'm not getting too cute here uh, versus this Washington team, even though they did give up a bunch of points versus the Atlanta Falcons. I just right now don't have a lot of faith in the Saints offense. Very inconsistent with Jameis Winston. They need to just feature Alvin Kamara in every which way. They need to treat Kamara like the Panthers treat Christian McCaffrey. Kamara can handle it. But, you know, until that happens, uh, I think we can't view Kamara as a top five running back. I think he's probably a mid to low end RB1 Hurts to say, but that's the case for Washington, Gibson and JD McKissick. I'll start both of them. Gibson, I don't, again, another guy that's kind of disappointing so far. I don't know if we can uh, call him an RB1, probably a high-end RB2, a little bit touchdown dependent because Washington just isn't utilizing him as a pass catcher. And, you know, that was going to be the thing that kind of put him over the top. Um, And then that's why JD McKissick on the flip side, is a starter because he continues to get the passing work and in PPR formats, that's valuable. So, you know, another guy as far as low end RB2, high end RB3. Moving on, we've got the Titans at the Jaguars. This one's pretty simple. You start both primary rushers. Derrick Henry and James Robinson love the opportunity for both of them because both these defenses are absolute trash. Derrick Henry, top five running back on the week. James Robinson, I would say low end RB1 just all depends on the usage and what Urban Meyer decides to do in his crazy head. Uh, Then as far as the sits, I'm sitting the backups. Carlos Hyde wasn't even active this last week, uh, but you know, I think he should be available in week five, but James Robinson's taken over this backfield, so no thank you to Hyde. McNichols is an interesting name, though. He was the primary target as far as pass catchers um, in week four for the Titans. How much of that had to do with game script? Obviously, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones out. Uh, I do think that was a factor. I just don't see that being sustained throughout the season. Um, And for that reason, I think that was more so just a one-week type of performance and once those pass catchers get healthier, McNichols, McNichols probably won't factor into this offense as much. Then Dolphins at the Bucks, only one running back. I want to start here, Leonard Fournette. Um, Fournette is the running back to own for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Forget about all that Ronald Jones hype throughout, uh, you know, preseason. Jones is absolutely droppable. He doesn't get enough carries. If he gets a touchdown, he's lucky. Giovanni Bernard, a bit banged up here. Leonard Fournette is capable of uh, handling pass catching opportunities. He's the only guy here. I would call him a low end RB2. For the Dolphins, I'm sitting everyone. Uh, Miles Gaskin has been underwhelming. Malcolm Brown doesn't get enough volume. And then when you factor in, it's versus the Bucks. No, thank you. Pass on every single Dolphins running back option here. Then Packers at the Bengals. You're starting Aaron Jones. Yes, he had a disappointing performance. A.J. Dillon was better versus the Steelers. But again, it's one of those situations where it just happens. Uh, Long term, Aaron Jones is obviously the guy that you want. Uh, A.J. Dillon, he's a backup. He doesn't have weekly, you know, startability here for fantasy football purposes. For the Bengals, uh, you don't see Joe Mixon's name here, and that's because he's week to week with an injury. So uh, you got... P. Ryan here for the Bengals. He's going to be a waiver wire pickup. I would say it's probably going to be a short term absence for Mixon. But in the meantime, you know, we saw it last season when Mixon was out. Giovanni Bernard, which is basically the role P. Ryan has, was a viable option as far as fantasy football was concerned because he was getting the rushing and pass catching opportunities. I think P. Ryan can do the same here. I've got him as a low-end RB2 on the week versus a Packers defense that can be had um, in a lot of different areas, to be honest with you. Then Broncos at the Steelers, only one running back I want to start here. That is Najee Harris. Uh, And, you know, even he has a pretty tough matchup. I think he belongs in the RB2 conversation, probably even a low-end RB2. Um, As far as the Broncos guys are concerned, I'm sitting both Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. Right now, they're pretty much at like a 50-50 split. And this is a tough Steelers defense, even though they're underperforming offensively, defensively, they can still get it done. And Teddy Bridgewater hurt. So, you know, versus subpar quarterback play, the Steelers defense can really make life difficult for you. So right now, uh, it's just too difficult to, you know, pick between Gordon, between Williams, though, they're just vulturing each other too much. 
Uh, they're going to be big play dependent. They're going to be touchdown dependent, and I don't like it in this matchup. Long-term, Javante Williams for sure, but I don't think we've gotten to that point where he's running away with that backfield quite yet. Next up, we've got the Bears at the Raiders, and we begin with Damian Williams, who's probably going to be the poster child of Week 5 waiver wire pickups, obviously because Montgomery gets hurt versus the Lions. Knee injury, but word on the street is he avoided major catastrophe doesn't seem to be an ACL, but I still think it'll be a lengthy absence. So Williams is going to have fantasy appeal. Now for what it's worth, you know, this offense still has issues. They're not going to play the Lions every single week, Chicago that is. So Williams is not an RB1. Uh, I would say that also for David Montgomery if he were healthy. I view Williams as a low-end RB2, but that's still valuable as far as fantasy football purposes at this point in time. And I still think the Raiders are an average enough defense where Williams can have some success versus them. For the Raiders, Kenyon Drake, uh, he's that PPR option for the Raiders. That's been the case all season long. And then Josh Jacobs, if he returns, uh, I like the opportunity there. You know, they're feeding that main guy, whether it's Jacobs or Peyton Barber. Obviously, if Jacobs doesn't play, then you roll out Peyton Barber, and that's valuable. Yes, to some extent, touchdown dependent, but when you're getting 20 plus carries, uh, it's a start, more so standard based here as far as Jacobs is concerned, but you still roll him out even in a tough matchup versus the Bears, just temper expectations in the mid to low end RB2 category. Then Browns at the Chargers, you start everyone here. This one's simple. Uh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt for the Browns. Yes, Chubb, Chubb has been a little bit underwhelming so far, but he's still an extremely talented running back. Kareem Hunt, if anything, has overperformed. And, you know, in the high-end RB2 category for PPR uh, scoring, uh, Chubb, again, still that more standard-based guy, maybe should be viewed as a high-end RB2, but either way, both guys must start. For the Chargers, simple. Austin Eckler, every single week, a must-start. Loving in PPR, I would say pretty much every single week, the guy's top five running back play. Giants at the Cowboys next. You start the primary guy, Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott. Barkley had, you know, that vintage Saquon Barkley game this last week versus the Saints. Really nice to see. And this is kind of what we expected. It, it would take him a couple weeks until uh, he got going. Uh, he would need some more favorable matchups and, you know, the usage would come. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. Uh, probably a low end RB1 for Saquon Barkley. It's going to depend on the game flow, whether, you know, the Giants are down quickly, something like that. But either way, he's a must start for the Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott last couple of weeks has been awesome. The offensive line looks great. Uh, hopefully you didn't panic sell on Ezekiel Elliott as far as any trades or anything like that. The guy's an RB1. I'd say mid-level RB1 on the week because the Giants do have a stingy defense. And then Tony Pollard for that same reason uh, is going to be a sit for me. He's probably going to be getting between like eight and 10 carries a week. That's a little bit too risky, touchdown dependent. So I am fading him there. Then 49ers at the Cardinals, Elijah Mitchell, if he finally comes back from that shoulder injury, I'm starting him. If not, you go with Sermon. The question is, you know, his Sermon earned enough, you know, kind of confidence from the coaches. If Elijah Mitchell returns to potentially still be the starter. That's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, I still think maybe, you know, the 49ers have more faith in Mitchell, but that's going to be something to monitor. Either way here in this matchup, I think both these guys are probably mid-level RB2s. Also, let's not forget Jimmy Garoppolo, probably going to miss a couple weeks with that calf, so it's Trey Lance. So I do think that further kind of limits both these running back upsides. For the Cardinals, Chase Edmonds, I'm starting him. Uh, the guy's an awesome PPR option, you know, mid-level RB2 there. Uh, I'm sitting James Conner. Yes, the last two weeks, he's done very, very well. Uh, he's gotten in the end zone twice those last two weeks. I'm, it, it's going to be something trend-wise that's very tough to continue. Now, if he uh, outrushes Chase Edmonds again for a second straight week in a row, then we can have a conversation next week about James Conner being a weekly start. But I think that was more so due to game flow because the Cardinals were up on the Rams quickly and they were up big. So James Conner got more opportunities than usual. Uh, so for that reason, I would sit him here, but if you're desperate, you know, uh, potentially could do worse. So he's kind of on that fringe start sit situation with Connor. Then Bill's at the Chiefs. This one should be very high scoring, which is why I like Singletary and Zach Moss. Normally I've said this before, uh, when the game script isn't a positive one, I wouldn't start both of them. But in this case versus the Chiefs, there's going to be a lot of points in my opinion. Chiefs defense hasn't exactly been great. Singletary and Moss, both low to mid-level RB2. 
twos. Uh, and then for the Chiefs, it's simple. There's only really one name, Clyde edwards alaire the most reliable guy. Two really nice back-to-back -back weeks in a row. And I'd start him here. I think he is a high-end RB2, low-end RB1 on the week. Afterwards, Colts at the Ravens. Only one guy I want to start here. That is Jonathan Taylor. Uh, for the Colts, yes, I would normally have Naheem Hines as well, but T.Y. Hilton could potentially return. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, if not, you know, Hines was disappointing this last week, but that's what you're going to get with him. You know, you're going to get some really big weeks and then some weeks where he just doesn't really show up because he's not utilized as a rusher. He's a pass catcher. That's what he is. Uh, and if he doesn't get it going in that department, then he's going to give you probably below five points. So a little bit too risky right now. For the Ravens, this might seem like a surprise. I'm sitting Latavius Murray. Yes, Tyson Williams was a healthy scratch this last week, and Murray was the guy, and he did have a touchdown. But again, it, it didn't look all that great. The yardage wasn't all that great. I'm not sure whether Tyson Williams is going to be a healthy scratch again. Uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell was a little bit more involved. I think all these guys, as far as the running backs for the Ravens, are kind of in a makeshift situation. Uh, I don't love any of them specifically. I, I don't, again, I don't think that uh, Latavius Murray is necessarily going to be the primary running back in week five. That's my main worry here. If, I will say this, Tyson Williams is trending towards being a healthy scratch because I think he is the main competition for Murray, then I would put Murray as a startable guy. I would have him, though, however, as a low-end RB2 that is very touchdown dependent. So with that, we wrap up our week five fantasy football running back starts and sits. And as always, let us hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.